What is going on guys, DBG here, and in this video we are going to be doing a tier list. So, this is going to be a tier list of the best mid-tier cards in NBA 2K20 My Team, because when I was normally, like when you're talking about the best overall cards, like even last year, things like that, um, when, like I obviously did a lot of tier lists last year as well. But this year, there's already more Opals than there was last year. There's something like 113 Opals in the game, which is kind of nuts, if you include Evos. So there's already more than last year. And there's a big discrepancy between the best of the best and budget players in terms of just kind of price because making those two tier lists, like the best of the best, obviously, apart from a couple of guys, like a couple of the Spotlight Sim rewards, it really is just a big gap between the top tier and the budgets. And there's no real mid tier, even though the vast majority of players that play this game are in the mid tier. So. Well, I have made some videos about them. I'm going to be doing a tier list of mid-tier players, which realistically is probably going to be the most relevant tier list for most players because, again, the vast majority of people that have played 2K and aren't just starting have roughly around 300 400k, I'd say, total. Obviously, there's some people with millions of MT that have been playing from the start and grinding, but the vast majority of casual players are probably with 300 400k MT because of all the like free packs that 2K have given, because of everything. Most people do have that type because of locker codes. The amount, or most people do have that amount of empty. But um, okay, so we're gonna start off with explaining what I'm, what I consider mid tier. So mid tier is less than 75k, more than 15k, or sorry, more than 10 to 15k, and all, or also a two hour spotlight grind. So in two hours, without question, you'll be able to make 15k playing TTO, even if you're not very good at the game. Um, so that's what I'm gonna say. So that's why I've put all the. Uh, lock in, well, not lock in rewards, spotlight same rewards in this tier list. But anyway, now let's get on to it. So, Rui Hachimura is like a defensive mellow pink diamond, but slightly worse. It's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to explain, but uh, I'm going to throw him in C tier because I don't really see there being a reason to use Rui Hachimura at this stage in the game. There are just so many better options. He's kind of undersized at the power forward. Not, doesn't quite have the animation of small forward, was good at the time. It's kind of crazy that a card from like, in two months, a card's for, gone from being an elite card to not good, not, or barely usable. But um, yeah, the last two months have kind of been crazy. We went from February, or in three months, we've gone from the first packable Galaxy Opal to literally 100, literally over 100 of them. But um, Cam Reddish. S. I don't know why there was even a question. Cam Reddish is one of the top two guards in the game. You can argue as a top seven or eight two guard in the game. And like, if you have Cam Reddish, like if you think that upgrading Cam Reddish to anybody is going to be the difference between winning and losing a game, then it's it's a you problem, not a game problem. Because Cam Reddish is one of the best cards, period, in this game. Then we have got Andrew Wiggins. I'm going to put Wiggins for around 30-ish KMT mark, maybe a bit less. I'm going to put Wiggins in A tier. Wiggins got a pretty good release, a good defensive card. The weird thing is, is that, for me, he just really struggled in terms of um, dunking, which is what he should be best at, but sure, look, it is what it is. It is what it is, and he's going to be still a somewhat decent card. So, or sorry, not somewhat decent, so, uh, somewhat good card. So he's going to be A tier more than usable. You can get better value players for the price, but he's still pretty good. Then we have got Michael Ray Richardson. He's going B tier. So he has some positives and some negatives. Negatives, his release is slow. Neg oh, another negative is he's not an easy Evo. The reason why he's in B tier and not higher is like if if he came as his pink diamond, he probably would only be 15k MT. But because he's the Evo and goes up, he's a lot more expensive. Um, He's he's okay. Like his release isn't great, but he's a really, really good defender. Pretty decent and good height, but Problem is, he's just kind of outclassed at this stage. So then we have got Reggie Theus, who I'm going to put into A tier. So Reggie Theus has the advantage of being like one of only two giant budget point guards. So it's only him and Bonga. Like, if you, these guys can match up. Theus can match up to the Yanises of the world. He can match up to the Magics. He can match up to the Simmons of the world. So for, um, for that reason, he's very, very, you, you can't put him below the A tier because he's got that height. Also got elite interior defense, is a good um, post player as well. If they could put a little guy on him, he can bully him inside. So the problem with this card is that he's got Penny's release, and I really hate it. If you play meter on, it's not terrible, but if you play meter off, 
you better believe you're going to struggle. But at, at this stage in the game, I think it'll be very, very soon that everyone starts throwing the meter back on because obviously the servers are completely fried in EU and everyone's basically having to play meter on right now in EU. So I think that it'll be only a matter of time until the servers are so bad that people are starting to play meter on again. But uh, yeah, he's going A tier. Karan Butler. I really like Karan Butler, but I just don't think... Like, I think he's just outclassed by players that you can get for two-hour grinds. Like, as in, he's probably, like, the fourth or fifth best two-guard you can get for the two-hour grind. But there are 100% are better players you can get in the two-hour grind. Cam Reddish is one example. Guys like Walter Davis are better. Sean Elliott. So, he's just kind of outclassed, and there's no real reason to use him. Like, you can literally get four wings that are better than him, so he just doesn't really have a use. But not a bad card. Steph Curry. He can shoot threes and dance around screens, I guess. And he can do it effectively, but it's Steph. He's still an undersized point guard that can't really dunk. Not that much worse than the Opal, though. Gotta give it to him. Not that much worse than the Opal. Sean Elliott. Not quite S tier, but he's going A tier. Got the Chris Bosch release, so it's actually really nice. Good handle. He's got good height at 6 foot 8. I can play it too. Really good spot of shooter. And, like, I would say, I honestly think Sean Elliott's better than, like, a Chris Mullen. I think he's better than a Karan Butler. I think he does that type of job better, but not quite S tier. However, when we're talking about S tier, we're talking about the man, the myth, the legend, Roko. I'm not I am not as high on Roko as someone like Ty Debo is. Like, I think he's fantastic. I think he's one of he's one, without question one of the best mid-tier guys in the game, but I'm not quite as high on him. However, he's there's no questioning how good this card is. Like, he shoots the ball well enough. He's got good handle, he can lock people down, he's got great length, he's got a big player build, and he's not going to be a problem on any tier. Like, for example, if you have a team with, I don't know, I'm trying to get the best team possible. So if you had, at the point guard, say LeBron, at the two, Jordan, at the three, I'm trying to do probably AK, um, at the four, uh, Evo Bowl Ball, and at the five, Shaq. If you have that team, probably, like, Actually, Anthony Davis, sorry, at the four. If you have that team, it's probably the best team in the game. So, if you take AK out of that team and put in Roko, you literally won't lose anything. And for that reason, he's the perfect cone. He's the perfect plug-and-play player. He fits every team. I can't put him not in S tier. And we got Jonathan Isaac. Jonathan Isaac is going B tier. If he had range, he'd be S though. I'm telling you, we surely we're getting Jonathan Isaac as part of some sort of generation next set soon. Because a Jonathan Isaac card with range, I'm telling you, that card's a... That card's a demon. Like, that card is um, an elite, elite card. He's got a really, really nice release. Problem is, no range. And at this stage in the game, you really shouldn't have any players in your team without range extender. Especially if you are running. Um, because it just ruins the spacing. Because if you have, like, the Hawks freelance or the uh, point freelance, unless you run 21 delay with a player stick on the three-point line, it literally means that if he's playing up at the top, the other player can just off-ball and double-team off him because he's not going to hit that deep three. Then we've got Brandon Roy. Brandon Roy, in terms of mid-tier cards, he's S. Like, overall, he, he has a bit of a problem that he doesn't have un unblockable, so he gets blocked a lot going to the basket. He gets blocked a lot on people blitzing screen, or he gets, um, he loses the ball a lot on people blitzing screens and on bump steals, but he still is basically a T-Mac clone. He's still fantastic. Ralph Sampson, 7-4, not a great jumper. A, he's okay. He's pretty good. But he healed pretty good. A great 3 and D cone. So B tier. He's just undersized. He's 6 foot 4. Russell Westbrook. B. I can't really justify putting Russell Westbrook in any really higher than B tier. Because he is an undersized point guard. Got a pretty good release though. Pretty good dunker. Is he better than Steph? Probably. Um, is he any better than B tier? Probably not. Like considering the fact that like Dennis Smith Jr. is 8K MT. And gives you pretty much what Russell Westbrook gives you. We've got Shaquille O'Neal. I'm putting Shaq, as far as mid-tier cards for the price, he's one of the worst value cards in the game, in D tier. Like, Shaq was in my budget tier list, Amethyst Shaq was in B tier, and I think Amethyst and Pink Diamond Shaq are basically the same card. Just like Pink Diamond and Diamond Dwayne Wade, like, they're so similar that it makes no difference if you use them. I think that, like, if I see, if I come up against Pink Diamond Shaq, I think, I know I've won the game. Like, because you know, if somebody's, just like if you come up against anytime soon, Pink Diamond Dwayne Wade, well, obviously, Dwayne Wade's a lot better than Shaq, and there's no guarantee. Normally, when you see something like that, you're just thinking, yeah, they probably don't know what they're doing if they haven't just saved up the MT to use in other areas of the team. But, um, yeah, this Shaq, 
The problem is that in mid tier, there's a lot of good centers. There was not many good budget tier centers. Mid tier, you got Ralph Sampson, is the same thing as Shaq, but he's bigger and he can shoot. And there's another few players like Greg Oden's the same. There's just better guys than Shaq for this price. Then we got Kawhi. I like Kawhi. I really do like Kawhi. I think he's one of the more underrated cards in the game. I think jump shots are really nice. Defense are really nice. Has got. He's got pretty much everything you need. Not as not not as good as the other one. The other pink time Kawhi is definitely better. But the other pink time Kawhi is under 100k, and this one's over 100k. This one's like 20k. Now, the value wise, this Kawhi is much better. This Kawhi is more than usable right here. And honestly, like I don't think he's the greatest value card in the world, but he is. He is more than usable in this game. So anyway, now we are going to go on to Demar Derozan. So Demar Derozan is going B tier. He's got really, really nice animations. He's got pretty much everything you could ask for as well, except quick first step. He's got the Trey Burke release. Quick first step though is just a little bit of a problem. And it is, it's kind of, it's killer. Like that badge is really, really important. And at this stage, like he was great when he came out. He was great in January, but at this stage in the game, it's kind of a must. Jim Paxson is next. So we're now at kind of some of the higher, are these higher overalls or the lower? I think these are the higher overalls. But Jim Paxson is, he's like a worse Reggie Theus. Like very, very similar, but worse. So I'm going to have to put him in B tier. Not that much worse. He's like, I called him Budget Lonzo for a reason. Um, but he is, yeah, he's a worse Reggie Theus. Darius Miles. Get into S tier right there. Darius Miles on 20k MT. You are getting Jeff Beasley. You are getting a mixture of Jeff Green and Michael Beasley with one of the best hezzies in the game, but an elite behind the back and through the legs. One of the best rim runners. One of the best pure cards in this game. Like, this Darius Miles card is legit. Like, he can compete. He can compete with any card in this game. He's fantastic. Gerald Green. He's as good as Kawhi, if not better. Really, really nice. We have to know a lot of these cards here are going to be in higher tiers, let's be real. These are not, this is where the mid-tier 98 overalls goats are coming in. Jeff Green on the level of Darius Miles. He is elite. Like, absolutely elite. Like, very similar. Like, it's literally personal preference which of Jeff Green or Darius Miles you prefer. They both do very similar things. They are both, like, budget equivalents of Yanis. Like, they play the same time. Obviously, they don't play it as good as Yanis, but they're budget equivalents of that pink diamond Yanis. And we got Paul Silas. So, Paul Silas... Like you could definitely argue S tier, but I'm going to put him in A tier just because he's 6'7". So 6'7", can't play at the 2. If you can play at the 2, he'd also be an S tier. But he's got a really nice release. He shoots the ball really well. He, again, he can do absolutely everything in this game. Like, there's nothing Paul Silas can't do. He's a locked in defender. Basically, every, not basically, literally every defense about at least gold. One of the better cards in the game and a card that I really, really enjoy using. Rick Smith's, he's, Ralph Sampson with a better release, so let's put him behind Ralph Sampson right there. Like, literally, basically, same thing, he just has a better release. Derek Rose. Yeah, I'll put Derek Rose B tier. Derek Rose is really, really nice. I don't think I can justify putting him higher because he's a 6 3 point guard. He is not that much worse than the Galaxy Opal. Trust me, he's not that much worse than the Galaxy Opal. And in terms of just pure scoring, he's definitely better than a Reggie Theus. It's just that obviously Theus fits one specific role and it's a role that only two cards under 300k fit. So that's why he's in a higher tier. Eddie Curry, you better believe Eddie Curry's going into S tier. You better believe he's going S tier. Rodman is a weird one. In terms of fun to use, Rodman's in D tier because he is one of the least fun players to use in this game. He is not fun whatsoever. In terms of actual effectiveness on the floor, he's A tier. So, he's going to be somewhere in between these tiers. And I can't justify putting him below Jonathan Isaac, even though his release is really slow. He is not fun to use whatsoever, but you know what? He's good. He's a good card, and I hate coming up against him. So, that's why he's there. Des Mason. Ooh. Pri uh for me, Des Mason's A tier. I understand why some people hate the card. If you are a dribble god, you will hate this card. If you are someone that relies on behind the back and through the legs, if you are someone that relies on that, he is you're going to struggle. If you are somebody who just runs by people, or comes off screens, sprints off screens, and peekaboo sh and shoots peekaboo jump shots, Des Mason is going to be fantastic. Depending on the type of player you are, this card is either worthless or fantastic. 
So I'm going to have to put him in A tier because there are a lot of players here that will have a lot of success with this card. Then we have got Ben Wallace. Ben Wallace is a better, he's better Robin basically. He is just way better Robin. I can't not put Ben Wallace in A tier. An absolutely, absolutely fantastic player. His, he's Robin with a way better release basically. 6'9", clamps people up, shoots the lights out. Really good card. Michael Red. In terms of pure catch and shoot, S. Michael Red's really, really good, lads. He's really good. Like, I don't really use him that much because he, I, like with my accounts, it's either I have T-Mac or on my backup account, I have just better players than him. Or on my no money spent, I have better players. Then on my Road to Glory account, he, I just can't afford him. So I don't have, like I literally don't have a mid-tier account. A card with, or an account with full mid-tier players, but if you are a mid-tier level player, Michael Red's a perfect two guard. Dino, you, why am I even questioning this? Dino is S-tier. Absolutely elite, elite card. Greg Oden. And there might only be one card in C-tier, one card in D-tier. Greg Oden is like faster Shaq. Um, no range, which is a bit of a problem. I'll put Greg Oden in... One of these two tiers, I don't know which one yet. I'll leave Greg Oden until the very end. Paul George for a mid-tier player, 70 something K. No question about it. if you can get him for that, he's S tier. Um, Rudy, just like in every tier list we've ever done, Rudy get, I can't say his name, otherwise it'd be demonetized. Rudy is a slightly lesser version of Paul George. So he's going one tier below. And then we got Pink Diamond, Dwayne Wade. And this is a really, really weird one. Because in terms of pure ability, obviously he's an S tier for around 40 KMT. But as just kind of a public service announcement, I am putting him in D tier for a reason. The diamond is the exact same. The exact same. So for that reason, I'm putting him in D tier just to make a point. Then we got Magic Johnson. So Magic Johnson, oh, I don't... I don't know how I feel about this card. So Magic, I hate him on offense. He's fantastic on defense. No range extender, but can shoot the three. I can't put him any lower than B, but it's whether I put, yeah, I'll put him in B tier. I'd be, I'd be half considering putting him in A tier. And now we have got the last player, Greg Oden. I really don't like using Oden, but I know a lot of people do, but I, I'm not putting him above B tier. I don't, at least we, like we're off Samson, sometimes I feel like he's a threat. I don't ever feel Oden is. So anyway, that's the video. A weirdly, weirdly skewed tier list. But um, you know what? It is what it is. Anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, oh, oh,